Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show. If you like the Mike Widener Show and you want to make your own podcast, well, let me tell you about Anchor. First of all, it's free. Secondly, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. You can also add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. You can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, many more. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get start the mike wagner show is powered by sonic web studios hi this is mia mohsen zia also known as mia no time for love check out my latest book missing available in print and ebook format on amazon it's now time for the mike wagner show powered by sonic web studios visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs the mike wagner show can be heard on spreaker spotify iHeartRadio, youtube itunes anchor fm radio public and the mike wagner show.com mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe so sit back relax and enjoy another great episode of the mike wagner show Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international war ring author Mia Mosenzia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Mosenzia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia's garnered great reviews in Eve 11 and George by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and more. And coming soon to Hamilton Radio every Thursday night at 9 p.m. at hamiltonradio.net. Also, take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies. Makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molsonzia for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also t-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molsonzia. Check it out today. Also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM. PayPal, themikewidenershow.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com for the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with three terrific gentlemen who are um, on uh, opposite uh, ends of the coast. We have a gentleman who's an award-winning author and uh, internationally recognized um, business uh, life strategist. And uh, he has 15 best-selling books and seven number one international bestsellers, including The Rings of Truth and uh, Get Rich for Entrepreneurs, Unleashing Your Authentic Power, The Power of Letting Go, and more. And we also have a gentleman who's also assisting the, uh, the amazing war winning author and part of the change series. We'll talk about that. And also we have back once again, a wonderful war winning writer, entrepreneur, lyricist, and um, former vice president of Avon known for um, also known for writing our great Virginia as the state anthem. And uh, he was an early online journalist covering both uh, conventions. Also uh, first to cover the Academy Awards and a string of hits. So, We'll talk about the amazing ventures as well and the change live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios from downtown New York City and also on the West Coast. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the amazing trio of Jim Britt, Jim Lutz, and backed by popular man Mike Greenlee. Guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Mike, good to have you back. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Jim, just want to say thanks for joining us here. You guys can uh, talk. It's okay. Yeah, well, we're we're happy to be here. Okay. Pleasure. And and Jim, you as well. I'm glad to see you was on board. 100%. Yeah. Hello from San Diego. Yes, that's right. Oh, just beautiful. I wish I could be there with all you guys, but uh, you know I guess- what? I have an idea, which is 
I think I was the catalyst for getting us together. And so I'd like to talk about the change book series, which made me want to do that. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. We'll, uh, we'll talk about that. And uh, Jim, you're an award-winning author and internationally recognized uh, business life strategist, also 15 best-selling books and seven number one international bestsellers. And uh, Jim, you're also the uh, co-author with Jim Britt on the chain series. And Mike, you're also the uh, award-winning writer, entrepreneur, lyricist, and former vice president of Avon. And before we talk about the change um, and guys, uh, just uh, tell us how it first got started, but Mike, uh, let's, uh, Jump in with you, give us a quick recap on how you got started and uh, give us a quick update. Okay, so back before many of your listeners were born, Avon was the world's number one beauty company and number one direct selling company. And I became the youngest VP in their history in charge of marketing and communications. And I learned a lot, including the fact that I would live longer outside of corporate life. <laughs> Besides, there are many executives, individuals and entire teams who can use my gift for words. My tagline, as you can see, is sound like you, only better. And my work is guaranteed. Avon had 100% guarantee. I took it with me. So I left and became a marketing consultant and then realized what I really wanted to do was write. So now I write speeches, PowerPoints, video scripts, ghostwrite chapters, books, editorials, and of course I write lyrics. So it's all about helping my clients sound like them. And what's interesting to me about the Change Book series, it happens to be one of the very most successful self-empowerment book series in the world. And not only have I contributed chapters to four different volumes, but I've gotten a dozen clients to do so. And the thing that I find so interesting about it is that it allows someone to share his or her expertise, offering value to the reader, and at the same time, by demonstrating that value, that's an opportunity for the co-author, as we're called. So I've in four different volumes, I've worked on a dozen others for clients. So my first uh, chapter was about how to give a presentation. Many executives secretly suffer, suffer from stage fright. I had to learn to overcome it, or I would never have been able at Avon, a very motivational company, to address audiences of 2,000 people. And so now anybody who reads my chapter can learn what I learned, but also realizes if they want help, because a lot of people secretly have stage fright, I can help them. So I've written chapters about that, how to give a speech, how to write a speech, how to write song lyrics, and also something based on consulting work I did for DuPont on quadrants of the brain and how to be most effective. So what made me want to introduce you to Jim Britt and Jim Lutz is the tremendous impact that their book has on readers, all kinds of readers, but also on every co-author. Every author that I've ever introduced to the series has gotten value from it. And I'm very glad that they're going to continue the series because it's useful for both readers and the authors. It's a win-win. And that's why I wanted to be sure that we all got together today. Mm -hmm. and, and what inspired you guys uh, all to collaborate and write the change? You know, starting with volume one, I think you're about to go up to what, what, 15, 16, 17, 18. I think I talked to you last. It's like, next thing you know, 19 and 20 are in the works. I'm like, oh my gosh, you got all that. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'll, I'll jump in. And so what happened was, you know, Jim and I have been in the seminar industry, uh, me for 30 years and Jim for 40. Um, so I've done seminars and events all over the world. And uh, seminars attract like-minded people. So a lot of the people that attend seminars are, um, are uh, coaches and speakers and trainers and, and authors that attend. And they were always asking me, how did I build such a large and successful company? And they'd be asking uh, Jim Britt the same thing. So we, we said, well, starting a business and building it are two distinctly different things. Um, you can start a business. That doesn't mean you're going to be able to build it. And where they always fell short was on the PR marketing branding part of the business. So we decided to create the book series, whereas it's not a normal book. It looks like a book, it holds like a book, it reads like a book, it smells like a book, but it's really a PR marketing and branding strategy that encompasses uh, four major components. One is connective credibility, meaning that somebody that's starting out can now associate their name with mine or Jim Britt or Les Brown or you know other people. So that caters to SEO. Uh, that caters to in-person credibility, which pivots people over to uh, uh, segregating them within the audience as somebody that is, has those connections. The other thing it is, is if you, uh, 
if you set up a booth at an event, it's gone in a weekend. If you do a Facebook campaign, it's gone. And that investment is over. A book never goes away. So it continues as an ally and a partner, if you will, to spread your message around the world and, and uh, for client acquisitions, speaking engagements, podcasts, interviews. So it's a permanent PR mechanism that goes out. And the third thing is, the last thing is, you have a, a tribe, a community. We're big on that. And for somebody to build a community that is this close knit and spread, and we have over 330 co-authors in 30 countries right now. So you walk right through the door and you're in a very fertile collaborative ground. You can do podcasts with people, others. We've had them do uh, news tours across the country, uh, do other programs and books together. So it really is something that was engineered and deployed and, and uh, the genesis was to really help people uh, because you know, and you know this, uh, if they decide to throw the towel in on their career because it got too rough, not only do they lose the career, but the thousands of people that they could have touched their lives by their work and their wisdom and their, and their uh, inspiration, they don't get touched either. So we wanted to create something that was special for the right people and infuse it with a lot of experience to, to help them get up and running and, and then stuff beyond that. Hmm. That sounds interesting. I like that last part you said about uh, a good reason not to just like walk away and quit when things go bad. I think too many people are doing that. And this is like a really good inspiration to say, hey, this is how you hang on as well, too. And uh, maybe some other tidbits. It's like, you know, what are, what are your reasons and everything else? And you also wrote about uh, creating your life masterpiece, uh, Jim, Jim, as well, too. So that's a really good uh, segment, that chapter as well. Yeah, thanks. It's, you know, it is, uh, you know, you get to the point to where your heart goes out. I mean, in fact, if you can fold time for people, um, why don't they just, you know, get involved with people that have been down the road, you know, uh, navigated through the landmines and uh, didn't trip and cleared the brush from the path and, and we'll show them how to do it. So in addition to the book, uh, we're not, you know, we're not quote unquote business coaches, but we build big, big businesses. And so we like a pick your brain mentorship with the book. In other words, they have my phone number, Jim Britt's phone number. They want, I just got off the phone with a co-author about an hour ago. She wanted to know how to fill up a workshop. Well, I've done hundreds of them. So I can tell her how to do that so she doesn't stumble for two years, you know, trying to figure it out. So it, it's, it's a blessing for us and it's been fantastic for people. And we can't have better people on board than Mike Greenery that uh, Greenlee that sees the uh, what, what this is really all about. Mm -hmm. And of course, you all mentioned obstacles that people face, maybe just uh, one or two stories on obstacles that you have and how you manage to overcome and also sharing with your readers, viewers, listeners and everything else. And um, pay attention, guys. Yeah, so uh, Jim, I'll take it from here. And I know you've never had an obstacle, Jim. So we'll, uh, we'll... <laughs> <All right. laughs> so the, uh, you know, for me, it's just been the, um, the entrepreneur journey. It's just been um, the all the standard obstacles, you know, there's self doubt in the early stages, you know, there's, uh, you know, overcoming criticism of others, etc. And when that culminates into, uh, you know, into a self image that's positive and the self esteem and confidence, and you get around those types of people, you're in a better position to overcome what curve may hit you in life later. Uh, so I got hit with health challenges out of nowhere. And I'm the guy that does everything right, you know, works out, drinks juice every day, and, you know, doesn't smoke. And, you know, and I still got hit with it, but I was in a better position to overcome uh, anything that life handed me because I learned how to uh, develop my mind. I learned uh, personal development, self-growth, self-empowerment strategies that are applicable to, to any area. So I'm 100% feel great. I'm totally healthy, but uh, it might have caused other people to go down the wrong road, whereas I already had that ability to see beyond that little hiccup and, uh, and beyond. So, Jim, I know you've, uh, you've got some great, great input on this story. Yeah, you know, I, uh, <clears throat> people ask me, uh, how, how did you become a speaker? How did, was this something you planned from early childhood, from early adulthood? And my answer is always no. I don't, I don't really know how it happened. It just kind of evolved. But speaking to me was probably one of the greatest fears that I ever had. And when I started 44 years ago in, in this field, uh, I happened to partner up with the late Jim Rohn, which a lot of people out there know, know of. Um, and we had a business partnership for about eight years. And my job was promoting him. But then very quickly, it phased into me speaking and 
pretty soon I'm hiring people and, and putting together a group of people. But still, I had no I had no credibility to go out and charge for my speaking. I, I kind of felt uh, I didn't know what to charge. I, I charged, you know, $500 or $5,000 or, you know, because I didn't see my self-worth at that time. But uh, the more I was around Jim and the more I got involved with, and it, it just kind of evolved for me. And of course, the more I spoke, the more confidence I had on stage. And, um, but I had to, I had to brand myself in some way and I didn't know how to do that. Um, in fact, I didn't even, I, I don't think I even thought the word branding at all. I just didn't know how to become famous or, or become somebody that somebody would know or want to hire. And so I remember flying to uh, New York to meet with Earl Nightingale. I uh, got invited to a meeting they were, they were having. So I ended up doing some seminars with Earl Nightingale. While I was there, Og Mandino shows up. Um, I ended up doing seminars with Og Mandino. Brian Tracy, who's still a friend of mine, uh, we talk regularly. Uh, Les Brown, um, Tom Hopkins. I flew to, I flew to, to Dallas to meet with uh, Zig Ziglar for lunch. Uh, just so I could, you know, connect with these people and all of them I, I've done seminars with. If they're still around today, they're in my cell phone. But uh, they were all, all became friends and, and business associates. And that's kind of how I branded myself. So with our book series, the thing I see with especially coaches and speakers uh, that are up in, in, in the public or consultants, uh, if they're just starting out, they don't have they don't have the credibility. Uh, just like I didn't have the credibility. So what we're trying to do with the, with this book series is give them the credibility, become become an author, uh, connect with a group of people that's that's going somewhere that they can collaborate with and learn from and do business with. Um, so that was kind of our our approach to this. And I, I don't think when we started, we ever thought that it would do what it's doing. But now we're on what book number is 18 or 19, I forget, 18, that we're, that we're now selecting co-authors for. So it's a pretty exciting project. Mm -hmm. And of course, one of them too, uh, you contributed to is the power of letting go. And uh, tell us a bit about that. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's been my, uh, my focus for a, a lot of years, probably 35 years. Um, I discovered uh, about 35 years ago, I discovered that, you know, we all get programmed as human beings from birth to death, I guess. And a lot of those things are very uh, useful programs that become second nature to us, like walking and talking and driving a vehicle and which hand you use to brush your teeth and, you know, which leg you put in your pants first and things like that. We don't give it a second thought. We do it the same every single time. And, you know, you get in a car to drive. You don't have to think, well, how do I drive this thing? Mm -hmm. You've already been programmed to drive it. I mean, you've got to be conscious. <laughs> uh, but on the other side of that, what I discovered is that we have these programs that that are the negative side that have become second nature and we don't know we're doing them and we know we have a problem we're aware that maybe we struggle financially or we're, we're aware that we have we've been in a, a series of abusive relationships or we're aware that we were overweight 200 pounds and we try to change it but nothing ever changes and the reason is because those programs are there and what what i discovered is that when you when, when you have an experience, you, you have a memory of that experience. And depending on the emotional level of that experience, you also have an emotional charge around that experience, uh, especially the negative ones. And so what I do is work with people to help them discover what the program is based on what their, their issue that they're dealing with in life and how to let go of that charge. So it's kind of like taking something that's on your desktop, on your computer, that's in your face every day that reminds you of something that happened in the past, putting it on a hard drive, throwing it in a drawer someplace. You still know where it is. It's in the drawer. It's not in your face every day mm. because you got no emotional charge. So that's what I do. It's uh, it's pretty, pretty in incredible work. I don't know how I was given the gift to do it, but it just uh, it's something that I, I developed about 35 years ago, and it gets very, very fast results for people. Hmm. And it certainly does as well, too. We'll talk about uh, how you guys all got started. And Mike can also uh, chip in as well, too. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by SonicWeb Studios. 
Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition way. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. It's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention to Mike Wagner's show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international war wearing author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews in Eve 11 endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Goals Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, one of our 30 podcast platforms coming soon to HamiltonRadio.net every Thursday night at 9 Eastern Time. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia and merchandise as well. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. Also support us on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Widener Show.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with three terrific gentlemen who are with us here on the Mike Widener Show. Jim Britt, award-winning author and internationally recognized um, business uh, strategist. Jim Lutz, uh, co-author with Jim Britt on the um, the Change uh, Insights of Self-Empowerment series. And Mike Greenlee, the award-winning writer, entrepreneur, lyricist, and more here on the Mike Wagner Show. And um, Jim, just getting back to some of your experience a little bit, you wrote um, seven international bestsellers that hit number one, including Rings of Truth, um, do this, get rich for entrepreneurs, unleashing your authentic power. And uh, tell us uh, a bit about the books as well and what inspired to write them. Well, which one? Uh, you can pick any one. I mean, it's free form. So it's like, I'll let you choose. Well, Rings of Truth is actually was my first book. Um, and I never thought I could write. So I had to hire somebody to help me. I, I talked and she typed. And um, <laughs> it's my story, basically, with one fictional character in it. Um, and you'll think there's two, but there's only one. And it is, in my opinion, and, and not only my opinion, but thousands of others that have uh, emailed me, sent me cards, letters over the years about what they've gotten out of the book. It's just one of the most uh, empowering books that, that you can read uh, because you just you, you get engaged in the story and you can't escape uh, being affected by it if you've got anything in your life that's not working. Uh, so it's... Uh, it's my favorite. It's one I always recommend. Um, even though all of my books, I don't tell the rest of them that that one's my favorite, but, <laughs> but it is. <laughs> I also like the one with uh, cracking the rich code as well, too. And I'm sure people want to hear that and you don't want to give it away, but you know, I seem to like that one. Yeah. Cracking the rich code is, uh, is a great book. I have a program on it too, called cracking the rich code at, at cracking the rich Uh, and it's, um, it's, uh, you know, to me, a lot of people have, they have trouble with, with money. And even though they spend about 80% of their waking hours going after money, whether they have a job or a business, um, you know, commuting back and forth, whatever, they're spending a lot of their waking hours going after it. But the reality is about 90% of the population doesn't have enough. And it's not because there's not enough money in the world. There's plenty of that. Uh, it's, it's something up here. It's, it's a mental thing that's stopping them. It's their relationship with money that stops them. And that's really what, what I work on in, in the book or any of my books. I'm working on what's what's up here and what stops people. Mm -hmm. And not only that, too, you launched 28 successful uh, business ventures and strategies to over 300 corporate um, ventures as well, too, presented with the uh, best of the best. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, well, I've stayed pretty busy. So <laughs> I've, had, I've done a lot of things. Most most everything I've done in business has been something to do with helping people, whether it's marketing a, a health and nutrition product or a, a television infomercial, or I owned a chain of 26 uh, wellness clinics at one point. Uh, you know, I've just, I've been involved in a lot of things uh, over the years that and many of them have done very well. Some, you know, some came and went. Okay. And also Jim as well, too, that uh, Jim Lutz, you also helped out with um, Jim Britton, the Chain Series. And uh, tell us how you first got started in your career and uh, 
and how you got there to this point. Yeah, well, I started just because I, I was, you know, just a, a huge reader of personal development. Um, I met a gentleman who was the catalyst. He said, build yourself. So he gave me all of the, or referred me to all of the classic books from Think and Grow Rich to Magical Believing and you know, Psycho-Cybernetics and the, the, whole, the whole lot. So I read and read and read and it kept mentioning the subconscious mind. And then I went to a party in San Diego. There was a hypnotist there. And uh, it just it blew my mind what this guy was able to do. And he kept mentioning the subconscious mind. So I made that correlation. And I just said, I've never seen anything like this. And that's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And I will be one of the best out there at it. And now, where do you learn it? <laughs> and it and I go, well, who's the best in the world? He said, a guy arguably named Gil Boyd in Los Angeles. So I drove up to LA, I met Gil. I literally begged him to teach me, he did. And then off I went and uh, he's long gone. But then I went, moved on to uh, creating a career in, in the hypnosis space and, and becoming one of the best hypnosis experts in the world. So then I decided to pivot it into where I could help more people. I didn't really want to be the stop smoking king of San Diego. And so I moved it into the seminar business and Serendipitously, I was at a, doing an event in Carlsbad, California, and um, Jim Britt had heard of me, and I had heard of him, and so we met for the first time at this seminar where we were both speaking, and and uh, that you know forged a friendship that's gone on for a couple decades now, and and we were chatting at chatting at his house one time, and and uh, we were talking about exactly what we said earlier, and I said, you know, uh, let's let's talk about a book series, but a different kind of book series, and and we were chatting and, and putting that down and and crafted the change book series based on what I said earlier of people uh, wanting some way to market their business and brand. And so we saw that deficit in the market. We saw that need and we put it together for that reason. And as Mike Greenlee will, uh, will testify as well. Um, and I guess that there, this makes sense. Uh, I understand it. You can have a healthy skepticism, but a closed mind is not necessarily conducive toward any type of growth. So a lot, a lot of times people out there, they just get in their own way. Um, oh, this is a book series. Why should I get in it? I don't want to do it. And, and I, the, the dichotomy is that the more successful a person is, the more they get it and off they go. A lot of people in the beginning, they're entrepreneurs, but they, they're, their risk tolerance is zero. They don't want to risk any money. They don't want to risk any time. They don't want to risk any relationships, but they want the end game of all of that. So we... Uh, I think sometimes people are just, uh, everything's no good. And it saddens me when I hear that because there are good people. There are good things. There are good strategies. There are good outcomes. And we're just jaded sometimes, maybe maybe for you know for right reasons. But we're just seeing this as uh, yeah, there is no end game. I'd like to see book 50. And we're the fastest growing personal development book series in the world. And so onward we go. Um, prior to COVID, we culminated into live events and Southern California, where co-authors flew in from the Greek islands, they flew in from Barcelona, they flew in from Ireland, Canada, U.S., and really um, nurture that community, but also give them that culture of uh, collaboration. They can really blossom a business, and, and we all, we're all entrepreneurs on here. It's hard to be an army of one. So there's 20 co-authors in each book. That means you have 19 other people promoting you all over the world, mm. online and offline. So it's leveraging that collective exposure. So it's been, and I'm telling you, know, I don't know anything. I'm always a work in progress. So I'm reading through the change book, reading Mike's chapter, reading these other, I go, wow, this really, I mean, some of these people, they might not be as well known as us, but boy, are they ever talented. And it just gives you perspectives and short bite-sized nuggets that are uh, really great for everybody, no matter how long you've been in this space. Mm -hmm. And, and you touched, touched on the fact that uh, everybody's an entrepreneur. I remember talking to um, a libertarian candidate who was running for vice president in his uh, libertarian candidacy, Wayne Allen Root. And um, he was on one of the shows I used to work with. And he said that everyone in America is a small business owner. The fact that you can, like, say, either write or you could speak or you could say, like, you know, you know, work with tools or whatever it is. It's like there's no such thing as uh, being unemployed. Everybody's got a skill and everyone is a small business or it just made me uh, allude to that fact. And uh, I just hope I'm correct on uh, what I'm saying, that everyone is not just an entrepreneur, but also a small business owner. Yeah, they are. I mean, and uh, it's, you know, they're just not academically groomed to know that they can monetize their passion. You know, they're usually anointed by an you know, educational institution that this is the path you're going to go down. 
uh, we're just not, we just don't think like that for most people that, you know, you could, you know, you could, whatever you do is monetizable. And I mean that in a positive context to where you can make a living at it if you simply know how to package it and market it. And there's people out there that will help and serve and, and uh, it's a win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think what's missing, what's missing too is the education around entrepreneurship. Um, I think it should be taught in, in, at least in high school, maybe before, um, but kid, because kids absorb that, you know, all of my kids were out selling red rocks to residents in Sedona, Arizona, you know, <laughs> I like the idea. I like to sell red rocks. That's a good one. I they, like that. <laughs> I mean, they would go down and find a, a construction site and go down with 10, 10 bottles of, uh, lemonade that they'd made and sell it, you know, and they're all entrepreneurs, but somehow we grow out of that. And, uh, I, I have six sons, two were, educated with my first first married both had college degrees and great jobs and and then uh, we, we have four with my my current marriage and uh, my wife homeschooled all of our four four boys and I did a class once a week in entrepreneurship for about two hours and all four of them are entrepreneurs are all business owners and they do their own own thing you know so they don't they don't do what I do they just went off doing their own thing so uh, it's just uh, it's understanding how to how to think like an entrepreneur even if you're going to have a job in a comp uh, company somewhere if you think like an entrepreneur you're going to be a better employee and you're going to you're going to go places in that company um, you know so it, it's a, it's a skill that everybody should have or at least learn. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really good skill as well, too. Speaking of special skills, uh, Mike, we talked about uh, sharing common ground a while back, and uh, that was really interesting. You also talked about being a lyricist as well, too. And um, what's been the latest as well, too, and uh, sharing common ground? You also had some great music out there. It's like, I love to hear about it. And uh, especially for you singers out there, it's like, you know, how can Mike just make you better? So, <laughs> Well, you know, I was thinking, hearing all this, that there was some research that People did not used to change careers a long time ago. And now we're more mobile and it's not uncommon for people to change. So I was thinking about my own story. And again, the change book series is inspirational as was pointed out with multiple authors there. You may be inspired by something today and something else in a chapter a year from now. So in terms of my own evolution, I came from Beaufort, South Carolina, a little island of 5,000 people took a bus up to New York City thinking they'd hire me as a playwright. It don't work that way, you know? <laughs> so I had to get a job <laughs> so I could buy a theater ticket. So I got into book publishing. You don't make money that way. I went to Lever Brothers and I learned about marketing detergent toothpaste. They're pretty much the same. So if you want to learn marketing, parody products like that are a good way because each one has to have a point of difference. And But it was not a very people-oriented place to work. It was like the Klingons in Star Trek. The person next door was your competitor, not your ally. That's not who I am. So then I went to Avon because a friend had left and gone there. And it's a much more people-oriented company. So I worked on developing 300 new products a year. Then I was in charge of the brochure, 22 million copies, 20, yeah, 22 million copies every two weeks. So you could do split runs and see which one sells more lipstick. And then in charge of meetings and events where I had to learn to overcome stage fright. So in that, my own evolution is an example of how people can evolve. And I think Jim Britt is right that having an entrepreneurial mindset within a company will cause you to have more ideas that you can contribute to. So eventually I read a couple of books that changed my life. One was Toffler's The Third Wave, which is about the incoming thing about computers. It was going to change our lives. And the other was, um, passages about the fact that we go through passages in life. So the bravest thing I ever did was to leave corporate life, started as a marketing consultant and realized I wanted to be use my words. So Time Magazine, I became Planet Earth's, Time Magazine called me, quoted me as Planet Earth's first interactive electronic journalist. And because <laughs> I'm old enough that back then people didn't know what the internet was. And when I wanted to, I, I was writing things already called Mike Magazine online it was a pioneer and people were reading my stuff in different countries. But when I wanted to get a press credential to cover the Democratic and Republican conventions or the Hollywood Academy Awards, they said, well, what's your magazine? Well, it's not that it's online. They didn't even know what I was talking about. But I persisted and became Planet Earth's first interactive electronic journalist, meaning that 
if I'm covering an article, uh, an event like the Academy Awards, a writer, a reader in Japan could say, ask, Steve, ask Steven Spielberg this question. It's interactive. And, and the world has changed. So now what I find is that I am an entrepreneur and my basic gift is words, but it's flexible. I want to use my words to help other people. And for example, my, I lost my husband to lung cancer. I will never write a, a, a speech or anything for a tobacco executive because it's harmful. He couldn't quit the addiction in time. I like to use my, my words as a gift to make the world better. So my songs have contributed to women's equality, to the Alzheimer's Foundation, to re reducing racism against black people. But the same thing with, with my corporate clients. I like to help, I, I feel good helping their careers. And when you help somebody, when I, when I am taking an input for a speech, I'm listening in stereo. So one ear is, what does the client want to get across to the audience? But the other is, with them, what's in it for me from the audience's point of view? Mm -hmm. And part of the skill is it's not just writing, it's helping that main idea connect with the intended audience. And truthfully, I'm a guy who can barely change a light bulb don't ask me to change a flat tire. I don't know what's <laughs> on the floor, but I, I seem to be, I know I'm the only successful Fortune 500 VP who's now helping other executives. And according to my clients, I'm the best writer they've ever had. So my goal is to continue, as long as I can think and type, to help people express themselves. And my work is guaranteed. I hope people will turn to me as a result of this and let me help them express themselves. And again, back to the change book series that these two gentlemen created, that's the whole power of it. One of my clients uh, that I've written for for many years was disappointed that the book, his chapter didn't end on the best selling list. And I had to point out to him, that's not the point. The point is reaching people because everybody's giving away their, their copies of the book. Some people are buying them too. And people find value in it. And that value is connected to who you are. So I'm, I'm hopeful that there'll be many more change book series. And what I'm hopeful is that people will discover as a result of my having contributed to four of them and having my chapters shared by others that I can help them sound like themselves only better. My work is guaranteed. I'll never accept, for example, if somebody wants comedy, I can be charming. I can make people smile, but I cannot make a roll on the floor with laughter. So I won't accept a comedy job, but anything I do, I'm totally guaranteed. And I really consider the change book series and these two gentlemen to be a wonderful way to help anybody get their expertise out there and connect with people that they can help. Mm, that's a really good point. Mike, I like the fact about uh, having your ears in stereo where it's like we're programmed to hear like, you know, what's going on in one source in both ears. I've done that all my life. It's like, listen to one thing in one ear and then listen to the other. I got that. You're, you're going to be floored by this. I learned that not in school, but from my dad, where he would just watch a Chicago Bears football game and listen to the Green Bay Packers in one ear and listen to what else is going on in the other ear. So that's how I learned. So you don't have to do it in school. <laughs> right. That is, yes. And what's coming up for, for these three wonderful gentlemen? We'll find out in just one minute. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by SoundWeb Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, The Mike Widener Show, international war ring author, Mia Molson's The Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with Jim Britz, Jim Lutz, and Mike Greenlee of the Change Series after this timeout. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. 
He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to The Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with Jim Brits, Jim Lutz, and Mike Greenley of the Change Series here on the Mike Wagner Show. And guys, you guys great, had some great insight to the Change Series. And um, besides the Change Series, uh, what else uh, can we expect from you in 2022 and beyond besides another uh, book or two in the Change Series? So guys, take turns. Well, um, lots, because now we're in the uh, post-COVID era. So Jim and I are speakers, so we sat and we got into the Zoom boom a little bit because you know, we were sitting. Uh, so we've got events coming up all over the country, all over the world that are being uh, established. People are ready to get out, mix, mingle, uh, get to a live event. Um, you know, we've been sitting there as studio musicians, so to speak, for a couple of years, and we'd rather be a performing musician than a studio musician. So I've got events coming up at Newport Beach at the end of the month. I've got uh, Vegas coming up. Jim and I are architecting some events that we're gonna be doing together. Um, you know, it's just it's just fantastic because they're just a different dynamic, you know, a different energy. So we've got that coming up. Um, I've got some platforms in the works and then the change book series uh, because it's uh, reignited. Now we uh, we changed the, the book cover and people were just kind of in this this uh, fog, obviously, that they didn't really know where they were going, what was going to happen or what they were going to do. So ironically, now they're actually achieving more clarity. And they're ready to build their business and build themselves simultaneously. So we're very excited. Lots of live events coming up and um, masterminds. I know I'm going to be looking at going up uh, to Jim's place and doing, he lives in way in the country. Um, I live in a high rise in the city. So it's about as opposite as you can get. So he'll come down here and we'll do some masterminds uh, at my place. I'll go up there. We'll do some masterminds at his place. And the masterminds are a, a high ticket, low head count, more intimate group of eight to 15 people and we can really um, create dynamic and profound change with an individual Jim uh, Jim's uh, skill sets merge very well with mine and so we're super excited about helping more people and just really being able to like, diversify how we get the how we get the message out and then Jim how about you well I you know I'm always working on another book I I, uh, I had a little downtime in the last two years uh, being off the road so I wrote two new books last year. And uh, th- those just came out. Uh, one of them is called The Entrepreneur, uh, Why 90% Fail and How to Avoid the Mistakes that They Made. And the other one's called Directing the Movies of Your Subconscious Mind. Mm. Um, and then uh, I'm always working on a- another book or ideas, but uh, I'm redoing my program called The Power of Letting Go. I just re-recorded uh, one of my other programs, uh, but kind of updating it, uh, always something new that you could plug in. And so that's uh, that's coming out here pretty quick. And um, yeah, and, and live events. I've, I've had three live events so far. I've got one week after next in Las Vegas. And um, it's kind of interesting after two two years of no live events and you go, you, you get in front of a, a, even a small group and you, it's kind of strange because you, you haven't done it. It's like uh, you can actually touch people, you know, so you're kind of like, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm looking forward to, uh, to more of those uh, coming up here in the future as well. And then Mike, how about you? Well, um, I'm the happiest writer holic you'll ever know. So I'm always using my friends, the words, uh, I have some new songs coming out. But I'm enjoying the fact that I'm helping, I'm ghostwriting some books for people, chapters and books, and helping them express themselves. And because it's ghostwriting, I can't reveal their names, but I help them sound like themselves only better. In addition to that, there's a company that I'm working with that found me on the internet. It's called Fanmire, as in mm, fans yes. who admire the, the celebrities that they like. And what I find so interesting about this uh, new company is it connects fans with the people they admire. So for example, I write country music songs. If I joined that and paid just $5 a a month, I could have a chance to, if Tim McGraw were part of it, say to to Tim McGraw directly, um, can I send you a sample of my song? And I would never have a chance to do that in normal life. And 
what I love about this idea of Fan Meyer is that it's connecting people again using the internet, which we didn't used to have, in a whole new way and, and making con communities possible that didn't used to be. And in addition to that, um, I'm still, again, being the only Fortune 500 VP who's now available to executives. I just worked on a job for Novartis, a major global pharmaceutical company for their uh, multiple sclerosis uh, neuroscience unit. And it gives me great satisfaction to help each individual executive convey his or her ideas in a way that's better than they could ever do without me. They can have the spotlight, you know, pay me, but they can have the spotlight and I'll help them make the most of their career. So I'm hoping for many more executives, whether they're solopreneurs or people in companies like ExxonMobil who hired me to work on presentations for everybody and help each one of them sound like themselves and make it all fit together. So as long as I can still think and type, I want clients, I want songs, I want to just keep writing and using my words for good. Mm. That's it. And I really like that. You guys are doing fantastic. And who do you consider biggest influences in your careers? So take turns, guys. Yeah, probably for me would uh, would have been Jim Rohn that I spent, uh, you know, eight years as a business partner with him. Um, he was kind of a mentor and really got me into the speaking field. And, um, you know, but there's, there's so many others, too, you know, that I've met like Earl Nightingale and Ogmandino and people like that that had had a major influence on me. Um, and, you know, I, I was a speed reader back many years ago, and I went through about 4,000 books. So that's uh, that had a major impact on me as well, because I, I had about a 97% comprehension. So I absorbed everything. And uh, so, you know, I think there's a lot of, I've had a lot of, a lot of mentors and people I've looked up to and learned from, and they've learned from me, vice versa. Um, you know, so yeah, that's uh, that's probably been some of the biggest influencers. Tony Robbins, uh, Tony and I are are friends, uh, and everybody knows Tony, uh, but uh, they don't know his beginning. He uh, Tony worked under under me for about uh, five years. Uh, mm -hmm. I hired him when I when I was with Jim Rohn, and he looked up to Jim Rohn as his mentor, and I was kind of his coach and 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 trainer basically. Amazing, and um, and uh, Jim or Mike, uh, take your turn. Well, um, I'm, I was listening to Jim Britt, you know, it's, I don't really have an individual, but I have individuals that cause pivots and I could even give you their name. I know one guy was Alan, but it was just uh, somebody that believed in me when I didn't really believe in myself. I didn't have a low self-esteem. It was just, I wasn't thinking big enough. And I was thinking, oh, you know, turkey sandwich, not Subway. Mm. You know, so I just I just didn't know the expansive portion of thinking. And then it was just an indo self indoctrination into massive information that I think it was like as Jim was saying with the 4000 books, just bombarding myself to where my mind didn't have enough time for self doubt. Every time I might have a little self doubt, that book I'm reading put me back on where I needed to be. And then that internal inertia just kept going. Then all of a sudden things start to happen. And things start to happen, and that, that snowballs into into momentum. So I think it's uh, and then that, you know that helps other people because when I'm on stage or when Mike is talking to a you know Fortune 50 company or Jim Britt is on stage, they always think you know it you know, a puff of smoke happened and you ended up there. I mean they don't know that the only difference between us and and them is we overcame the trials and tribulations rather than um, rather than uh, succumb to them. You know, we have the ability to to overcome them uh, and move toward our destiny and our self, you know, our self life by design that we wanted to do. And that's really what saddens me is just when I see people retreat and surrender and and give up on that latent potential that's in them and live a life of mediocrity that they don't want to do that. Uh, they just didn't have that internal fortitude or that mentorship or that inspiration, uh, or that catalyst, if you will, to, to push it through. Mm -hmm. That's a rather interesting point. And uh, Mike? So I agree with the, the spirit I've been hearing, which is I don't have one influencer. I want to stay open to the influences around me. But I will say that the, the, one of the things that changed my life the most was that I got into psychoanalysis, psychotherapy and psychoanalysis, and I became trained as a therapist myself. It changed my life. I was going to quit Avon and become a full-time therapist when they made me the youngest VP in their history. 
And my parents said, oh, no, young man, we want Arson to be a Fortune 500 VP. So I did that and then eventually left. But what, what I got from all those that years of, of psychoanalysis and the training as a therapist, I was already practicing and seeing patients and being supervised, was the importance of listening to oneself mm. and staying open because we're evolving, each of us, everyone is evolving. So as you begin to be influenced, whether you're conscious of it or not, by other things, you have to stay tuned to what's happening in your own mind. And the more you are in touch with who you are inside and what is exciting you now versus what excited you 10 years ago, the more likely you are to make choices that will make you happier 10 years from now. So I try to stay open to everything. And in the meantime, to use my gift for making a, a difference, a positive difference in the world. And certainly well done as well, too. What's the best advice you guys can give to anybody at this point? Again, take turns, guys. Well, I, I would say the best advice, um, you, you know, the, the, the difference between somebody that does it and follows through with it and somebody that just holds back and decides they're going to sit on the sofa and eat chips and watch TV um, and complain about what they don't have. Uh, the biggest difference is they all have a desire but some people are not willing to take it to the next step. And the next step is making a, a 100% decision, a, a commitment to follow through no matter what. And, you know, if you look at a decision like it's a full circle, most people leave a little opening in that. And that's their escape route in case it doesn't work. But in today's time, you've got to be bold and you, you can't have an escape route. You've got, to, you've got to move forward until you find out it either doesn't work or you make it work, one or the other. And I know my first year in business, my job was talking to people. And I talked to 10 a day for, for a year. And that's 3,650 people. And I ended up with one customer out of 3,650 and losing everything I owned. But I would not give up. And somebody dropped, dropped by my home one day and I had five days from living on the street. Both my cars were gone. My furniture was gone. My home was foreclosed. And this fellow showed up from the company and shared with me what I was doing wrong. And between that and another business that got presented to me about a few months later, uh, I ended up a year later uh, making my first million dollars. And, and it was because I would not quit. And, and I look back on it, it was, it was tough. I mean, going through that and losing everything. And, and I had days where I'm going, I, I don't know. I mean, what do I do? You know, I had a wife and a child. And I remember standing in my kitchen, looking out the window, reached in my pocket. You know, everything was gone. Reached in my pocket, I got 15 cents. And that's all the money I had. And I don't know what to do. Do I go back to the factory on the assembly line and go back to work there where I used to? Or do I keep moving forward? And I made the decision not to quit, keep moving forward. And that was the best decision I ever made. Mm -hmm. And Jim, how about you? Well, it was a, a scary change of environment. You know, I, I used to play in rock bands in uh, the 80s in Hollywood and a lot of fun. And But uh, when I decided that, um, you know, um, I got tired of eating macaroni and cheese and, you know, bologna <laughs> sandwiches with six guys. And, uh, you know, it looked good on the outside. It wasn't that great on the inside. So. The uh, I came to San I came I'm from San Diego but I, I came down stayed down here didn't go to LA anymore and I bought a jacket and not a jean jacket but an actual jacket you know and I felt that weird in it it felt like I was putting on a uniform or something because that's not how I was at that point I was in my mid 20s and I went to La Jolla which is like the Beverly Hills of San Diego right but I, I didn't go to that. I didn't go to those places you know and I went up there and I would go to the bar area at a nice swanky restaurant. I'd sit there thinking everybody's looking. They're not looking at me, um, but I thought they were looking at me because I, in my mind, I didn't fit in because they were doctors and lawyers and, you know, those types. Of things. And so I'm sitting there and I found something that was very fascinating. I found that they're just as nice as anybody else for the most part. And they're just as willing to impart uh, knowledge to you. And so I bought, uh, I was talking to this couple and I said, will you teach me some business strategy? They go, Jim, you know, you have another glass of wine, whatever. They don't know if I'm successful or unsuccessful. They don't know what I am. And I said, I want to buy you both dinner. No, you don't have to buy us dinner. No, I'm buying you dinner. I want to buy you dinner. They taught me more in business at a three hour dinner 
than my friend that goes to San Diego State University with a guy that, you know, doesn't make any money. These were multimillionaires teaching me for free knowledge that I call folding time. Yeah, here, go schedule C corporations, what you want to do. And then you go, I mean, my friend's in business college for three years. He doesn't know any of this. So my, my, uh, what came out of that was teaching people to find people. They don't have to be a hired mentor, but find people that can fold time. They're going to give you that information. It used to be the library, right? But, you know, the internet, but find them in person, you know, befriend them. They want to help. That's what we do with the change book series. People go, how much is it going to be if I call and talk to you for a half an hour? Nothing, nothing. I mean, I'll teach you whatever I know to help you go. So I kind of created my own curriculum and then selected my own instructors. <laughs> Cost me a dinner or two. <laughs> and you're making me hungrier already. And Mike, <laughs> best advice. Okay, best advice. Um, it changed my life, actually. So when I was at Avon, one of the things they did was they, when you first join, they send you out into Iowa. I'd never been to Iowa. And you go around and sell with representatives and you watch them. And what I saw was that it was more than a cosmetics company. It was empowering women. Of course, this was decades ago. Women were in a different position. These people, some of these women were bringing home as much money as their husbands, a factory worker. And they had a different sense of themselves. I was very moved by that. So years later at Avon, which gets to my advice, I, I was in charge of meetings and events. I was one of a number of speakers. One of the speakers was a big I called him big guy, rather than using his name. And he would stride across the stage and be very bombastic. That is not who I am. I've been called the most earnest person on the Eastern seaboard. And I'm a little offended. Why are they limiting my geography just to the Eastern seaboard? <laughs> what I am is in touch with feelings and authenticity. And what I learned was, don't try to copy big guy. Find out who I am and be my own best self. So when I told the story of how I had been moved by the representatives whose lives we at Avon, the whole idea was to motivate people, and I'm a motivational speaker too, rather than being a big deal about it, I told the truth sincerely from the heart. And you know what? I heard people sniffling in the audience with tears of appreciation that I was pointing out to them the difference that they make on people's lives, not just selling lipstick. These were district managers, and they were training each one of them, hundreds of representatives. And I gave them a new sense of with their purpose in life. And I only could have done that by listening to who I am and not trying to be big guy. So my advice to somebody would be keep learning who you are and then be your own best self then and then even better next time. And if you are in touch with your own truth, you're going to be more successful than if you're trying to copy somebody else. That's my advice. Oh, that's a really good point. I like that. I really getting a lot of great ideas, guys. Once again, Jim Brett, Jim Lutz, and Mike Greenlee of the Change Series here on the Mike Wagner Show. Guys, a very big thank you for your time. This has been absolutely fantastic getting all the guys together. It's well worth it. Looking forward to having you on again soon and keep us up to date. Once again, uh, tell us where can we find the Change Series? What's your websites? How do people contact you? And uh, again, purchase the book to Change Series. You can head to my website um, and just contact me and I'll show you, uh, I'll navigate you to the series. Uh, so that's lutesinternational.com, L-U-T-E-S, international.com. And Jim? And mine, mine is jimbritt.com, or they can email me at jimbritt at jimbritt.com. And I would say, um, of course, you can also buy, the Chasebook series is very popular. So you can, of course, buy it on Amazon. But if you want to, have a wordsmith it's mikegreenly.com that's why i wore the green shirt because i'm into branding Mike <laughs> i like that yeah. <laughs> that's good. guys very guys very big thank you for your time you've been totally amazing looking forward to having again soon keep us up to date keep in touch and uh jim we're gonna say something or no as you're gonna say uh it was great spending time with mike and mike and jim and jim that is perfect yeah. okay guys you got a great future heavy we wish all best and uh let's do it again with the change all right. Bye-bye. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios.
If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.